it is Thursday. Not only that, but it's a Thursday that ends the week because there is no school for you guys tomorrow. Which isn't actually exciting for me because I hate staff meeting day where we have to sit in meetings all day and I'd rather be teaching, but I digress. We have four questions from our work today. Uh, the first question asks us to change from fraction decimals to percents and vice versa. The fraction given is 3 twentieths. Of course, the easiest way to change a fraction to a decimal is to divide the numerator by the denominator, which works out to be 0 0.15. But the better way is to make an equivalent fraction that has 10, 100, or 1,000 as a denominator. Once I write it as 1,500, it's easy to write it as a decimal. And actually doing that actually helps me with the second or the third part to this, which is the percentage. Since percentages are always fractions out of 100, the percentage the 3 twentieths is, is 15%. And our second question, if I read this decimal, I read it as four thousandths, which is real easy to write as a fraction. That's two five hundredths, or in lowest terms, one two hundred and fiftieth in lowest terms. Neither one of those help me get the percentage, do they? But if I take this fraction and write it as an equivalent fraction out of 100, I get that which does help me see it as a percentage, right? It is 0.4%, or if I want to get real fancy, or 4 tenths of a percent, or if I want to get even fancier, uh, I can divide both by 2 to get 2 fifths of a percent. Less than 1%, right? Not 40%, but 4 tenths of a percent. I'm encroaching upon second question two here. Our last question in the first part says 15 and three quarters percent. Before you start this, you should probably change it to this, right? 15 decimal seven five percent, same thing. And once you write it like that, because it is a percentage, you could write it as 15 decimal seven five over 100. But we don't like decimals in our fractions, so we multiply both top and bottom by 100 to get 1575 over 10,000. And then what we want to do is read that it's 1575 10 thousandths or 0 0.1575 as a decimal. In lowest terms, ooh, this is a tricky one. What's 1575 divisible by? Well, it's de definitely divisible by 25, isn't it? So if I just double check to see what 1575 divided by 25 is, it's 63. <laughs> And 10,000 divided by 25, 10,000 divided by 25 is 400. So if you were incredibly uh, on the ball, you looked at 1575, 10,000, and says that's not lowest terms, reduced it by a factor of 25, and you got lowest terms of 63, 400. Did anyone here actually get that? No, okay, just me. So that's the first question done. The second question is the subtraction of polynomials. We have a binomial, take away a trinomial. And what did we say the easiest way to subtract polynomials was? Add the opposite, right? Just like in grade seven, when you learned how to do this one, you learned to keep, flip, and change, the same thing happens with polynomials. If we keep the first polynomial intact, change it to addition, and use the opposite of every term in the second polynomial and add them or gather like terms, we'll have the answer. Now, the instructions do say write in descending degree. So which term of those five terms has the highest degree? Right, so minus 2x squared is our first one. There are no other x squared, so we can't combine it. We have a positive x with a positive 3x, which makes a positive 4x. We have a negative 4 with a negative 1, which makes a negative 5. So when you added those, sorry, subtracted those, you actually added the opposite. You ended up with an answer of negative 2x squared plus 4x minus 5. Our third question gives us an algebra with decimals uh, as constants and coefficients. Our first thing is to get rid of our constant by adding 3.8 to both sides. When you do such a thing, it gets rid of it. You get negative 4.5x equals a positive 9. Then you divide both sides by the coefficient. 
and x will equal a negative 2 as a solution. How many 4.5s are there in 9? There's 2. A positive divided by negative is negative. And our last question gives us a composite two-dimensional shape. It's a right triangle. Actually, it's an isosceles right triangle because the both legs are the same length, so it makes it an isosceles right triangle. With a circle cut out, so the first part is design a formula. So if the triangle did not have anything cut out, its formula would have been base times height divided by 2. But because it's missing a circle, our formula would be base times height divided by 2, rem, uh, subtract pi r squared. Substitute our numbers. The base is 14. The height is 14. The pi is 3.14. The radius is 4. That's what it looks like when I substitute. 14 times 14 divided by 2 is 196 divided by 2, which is 98. Take away 3.14 multiplied by 16. Okay, I'm back. Uh, this is supposed to be a 16 here, but I kind of got spooked. Uh, 3.14 times 16. 3.14 multiplied by 16 is 50.24. When I take 98, the area of the red triangle, subtract the area of the white, I, oh, I didn't do that right, so I did something wrong there. 98 take away 50.24. Your answer is 47.74 square units. No, I don't know if it's centimeters. So again, when you don't know, you just call it units squared instead of centimeters squared.